So here is Viola Desmond, and just like you, she was an entrepreneur because she came out of that culture. Sometimes our culture and the things that we come out of are so underappreciated and not talked about. This is why I like shouters to an audience who say, talk about it. Because when you have people say, talk about it, we remember what we're talking about. You feeling me? You yeah. feeling me. Here we go. So here was Viola Desmond, and she woke up and she came out of that background where her father and her grandfather, they were Masons. And today I past the Masonic Temple and your tradition of Masons here on this street. Her mother was very, very uh, keen and impressed education. She was an educated woman. One little tidbit here, Wanda, Viola's sister, she's like 99 years old. You gotta go mm on that, mm. And her other sister is like 104, mm, right? So these are long livers, people who are still around to tell the story, the primary sources. And Viola Desmond also came out of the family with politics. Politics, people who were invested in changing the segregated elements in society that spoke to education. And because of this entrepreneurship background, her people coming out of the barber shop and out of the beauty sector, and because of the, the importance of education and that desire to be doing, Viola Desmond went to school and she became a, a beautician or a cosmetologist, if you will. And she didn't even stop there. She then opened Vi's Studio Beauty Parlor. Mm. And that didn't stop her either. She also had the Desmond School of Beauty Culture. So in fact, she didn't walk alone. She brought others with her along. She passed on that knowledge. And then one day in 1947, she decided, 1946, she decided to go on a, tri on a trip uh, to, a, to Cape Britain. And Cape Britain was like a couple of towns away. Some really small, rocky roads, deserted places. So back then in the day, in the 1940s for a black woman to be rocking in her car, mm, right? And be driving like that was a serious thing. Mm, safety, all those things. But when you are entrepreneurial and when you have a mission in life, ooh, you are focused. And so Viola Desmond is going in her car and wow, the car had a problem and it broke down in a place called New Glasgow. And so Viola took it to the mechanic and the mechanic said, hey, you know, I've got to send for a car back in Halifax and this is going to take about a day. And so Viola Desmond, she had some downtime. Even back then, women who were busy were struggling with downtime. There you go, right? Uh-huh. So she was struggling with this downtime and she decided to go to take in a movie. The movie was called Dark Mirrors. I'm always fascinated that the movie was called Dark Mirrors because I thought to myself, well, could she see herself in there? You know, that was just like one of those things that can go off in my head like that. And so she went into the theater and she bought her ticket. Mm. And when she bought the ticket, ooh, the cashier handed her ticket and said not a word. And so Viola Desmond went inside and she sat down. She sat down in her rightful place. And so the usher came up and said, no, 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 you can't sit there. You bought a cheaper ticket. You've got to sit in the balcony. And Viola does it. was like, what? I'm a businesswoman. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm an important person in the community. I'm a human being. What is this? Because back then in Halifax, there was not segregation as it was experienced in New Glasgow. And right across Canada, while segregation was formalized, it was indeed in practice. And so Viola Desmond said, you know what? I'm gonna go and pay the difference of the ticket. And the difference between upstairs and downstairs was a matter of 10 cents. Let me hear you say that, 10 cents. Just check that out, 10 cents. And they say, no, 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 you can't do that. We can't do that, huh, da, 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 da. And Viola Desmond thought, no, I'm gonna go and sit back down because I'm now experiencing this moment of injustice. So she refused and she went and she sat back down. Mm, no time at all. What do people normally do when we resist? They call the police. And so the police and the manager came and they said to her, ooh, 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 we have to remove you from the theater. And so they threw Viola Desmond out and they arrested her. And they charged her, get this, with failing to pay the 1% tax on the ticket. Look at this into that. There's some people in this world don't even show you their tax, right? Forms, right? And they can like run for high office. But here is this woman oh, now who wanted to play the 10 cents, but you know, boom, George failing to pay the 1% tax. Mm. You probably wondered what she was doing when she was in jail. Well, history tells us that, or her daughter said, her, her, her sister said, she opened her bag and she sorted everything out. And women, you know we got big bags, so we got a lot of sorting sometimes, right? And she organized her timetable. And so the next day, she was released. 
and she was fined $20 for refusing to pay the 1% tax on the ticket. And of course she appealed and it went before the Supreme Court of Nova Scotia and they say, no, 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 no. You were treated fairly and they threw out her case. And then so many years passed and now we roll up to the, the year 2010. And in 2010, with much advocacy from her family, and I want to say this because this is really important. This is what Malcolm Gladwell calls the tipping point. It took a person, someone by the name of Adrian Harwood. I happen to know him, and I just read this the other day. Adrian Harwood, you know Adrian Harwood because this is an Ottawa fraternity thing going on, right? Adrian Harwood said to Wanda Robinson, Viola's sister, don't let this thing with Viola rest. I want you to keep up the challenge of the government to correct this injustice with Viola. One person throughout our history, we are our ancestors' wildest dreams. I keep telling people that all the time. It just takes one person to make the tipping point. And so Wanda, and with the help too of another great woman, the Lieutenant Governor of Halifax at that time, May Ann Francis, they put pressure on the Canadian government. And so in 2010, the Canadian government pardon or release this burden on Viola Desmond's head. Now, I want to say to you too, this is really important to know. The Canadian government admitted that they were wrong. It wasn't that they reprimand or lifted this reprimand that Viola Desmond had done something wrong, but the government had created an injustice. That's really important for our children to know that the government apologize because the system was injustice. And so uh, Viola Desmond in her lifetime didn't get to celebrate this, but the world got to celebrate this. And so we were happy, so happy that in 2018, that this Viola Desmond came on that $10 bill. And I thought that the government checked out that she had to look good and uh -huh. I thought it was so good that she was vertical and not horizontal. That was so good. Like she was standing up. You're feeling me. You're feeling me on that, right? And so uh, my brothers and sisters, beautiful people of Atlanta, this is just a sliver. We have just cracked the tip of the ice, if you will. Did I say ice? I must be from Canada. Oh my gosh, what a metaphor, right? There we go. This is just a little bit of Canadian history and how we are married to you and how our histories are all incorporated. The great and the honorable Marcus uh, Garvey uh, Said, gave his, uh, his famous speech in Nova Scotia, again, backdrop here. And he said, emancipate yourself from men to slavery. None but yourselves can free your minds. And the great Bob Marley went on to make that song so popular all over the world. And so today, I am very pleased to have had this experience, to be on this street with people who have made great history and have impacted the world. And I'm also very pleased that as Canadians, Melinda Smith and, and, and I, I can come to this place to give you a taste of Canadians and to say to you, you are your ancestors' wildest dreams. So up you mighty race, keep on keeping on. Thank you so much, Aita. Thank you very much. And let me say quickly also that we do have a Marcus Garvey banknote in the Black Money uh, uh, exhibit, so make sure you check it out. 